Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD, and yes, we're at it again, uh, dealing with MDT 2013 and Windows 10 technical preview. And today's episode is all about custom settings.ini file. Now, if you guys have been tuning in with all my MDT stuff, uh, the custom settings.ini file is a huge, huge topic. Now, I actually have a an article that I'm going to be posting at the comment section, so you guys could go check out and. It, this article has a list of all the properties that you could use within your custom settings.ini file. Now, I can't really tell you guys which one is best on your environment, but what I could do is show you what I use day to day when I need to set up my stuff or a client site. Now, within the article, there's a link that's going to take you to the TechNet stuff. And if you click on a particular uh, property, like let's say database, it shows you how to use it and uh, you can only use it for LTI and ZTI and this is how you use it. Now, uh, I'm going to minimize that. I will place that link at the bottom of the comment section so you guys could go check that out. So um, before I even show you where to go within your deployment workbench, I want to show you that I, I have a cheat sheet. Okay, I, I carry a cheat sheet with me on my, my flash drive when I need to go to a client site. I don't have to remember all the reference properties to add into the custom settings. Uh, so I'm going to right click on this and let's go to edit. And I'm going to break down what I like to use day to day. Now by default, these are the ones that the custom settings.ini file already provides within your um, MDT server. If you guys have been tuning in with all my MDT stuff, you, you kind of saw me uh, get that nice little welcome dialog box that I have to say continue and you get another dialog box at, um, asking for your administrative password uh, and a domain. Now I got a little smart on this uh, playlist for you guys and I'm, I'm automating all that stuff in one shot. So if you want to skip the welcome stuff, you just add this attribute. Uh, if you want the, your deployment to already log in into your deployment share to start right off the bat. This is the attributes that you use. You use user ID, user domain, user password, and you just give all the credentials. Now I'm skipping the domain uh, membership for now because later on I'm going to be showing you guys uh, how to do that automatically. Uh, I'm, I'm skipping the apps on the upgrade. I'm skipping the capture, the admin password because we're actually adding that within the task sequence. So we don't need to do that. Uh, I'm skipping the product key because again, it really depends on you how you're doing it. You can either add the product key within the task sequence and, or you have a KMS server on your infrastructure that's actually providing the product key. I'm skipping the deployment type and I'm skipping the task sequence. Now I'm also skipping the application. I'm actually not going to skip the application because I need that. So I'm going to cross that out. Uh, I'm skipping the summary and the skipper in your user data. I'm skipping the computer name, but I'm actually giving them my computer name the serial number. So that's how you give your computer name a serial number. Um, I'm skipping the admin password and I'm skipping the product key again. I'm skipping the package display, local selection. I'm skipping that. BitLocker. Uh, I'm skipping the time zone, but I'm actually telling the time zone to be Eastern Standard Time. And this is a little new. I don't think I ever actually show you guys about uh, catching log within your MDT server. So I actually created a log file and I gave it everyone access. This is a share file. I'm going to right click on this and go to share. So I actually have this shared and um, I have everyone for read and write. So if you can't stay around the workstation and you need to do something else uh, at your workstation or so, you know, you just can't be around the machine that's being imaged. Uh, the log file, you can always go into your share folder, go to the log file, and it's in real time, especially if you have a utility. Uh, I think it's like what is called trace within the MDT uh, deployment tools, and it shows you real time uh, what's happening. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this right here is like the naming of your deployment, and that's it. So I'm actually going to control all, and I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to close this for now. And I'm going to go into my deployment share. I'm going to go inside my deployment workbench. I'm going to right click on this and go to properties. And you want to go to rules. And I already did it. So what I'm going to do is select everything because I did. I think I did a modification on it. So let's paste it. And we're going to apply. Now another section that you want is the bootstrap.ini file. So if you click on that, I keep it real simple on this. I just give it the deployment root where the deployment root is located. And I give it the user ID, the user domain, the user password uh, so I can log in into this deployment share. 
Uh, I also gave it a, um, a SMS uh, task sequence uh, org name, which is uh, BTNHD imaging process. Uh, you can add more stuff to that, but again, this is what I normally use day to day for a client setup or for myself. And we press OK. And the last thing that you need to do is that's it. And that's it, guys. Uh, that is dealing with custom settings.ini file, um, customizing it for your MDT workbench. Again, there's a lot more that you could do. There's a, a lot more, I mean, a, a lot, a lot more, but I, I really can't tell you what's best for you guys. You just have to go inside the list and pick which one is best for your environment. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Leave comments right below. Don't forget about hitting that like button because it does support the video as well as this guy. And I catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.